there's a famous story from BMW in the 1980s about how the first 3 Series touring came to life. Apparently, it was an engineer at the company who, at the weekend, decided he wanted to turn a saloon car into something a bit more practical. So he took his angle grinder, chopped, chopped, got a bit of filler in, a bit of structural reinforcement, and created the very first 3 Series touring. Apparently, he took it to management, and they liked it, and put the thing into production. And BMW has stuck with tourings ever since, and it's been a real heartland of the European market. Now, with that in mind, Genesis has decided to give us something just for Europe as well. This, the G70 shooting brake. It's a BMW 3 Series equivalent for the modern age. They've basically done it themselves, turned a saloon car into a wagon with the uh, extra bit at the back. And here it is, the Just For Europe G70 shooting brake. So let's take a look, see what it's like. Now here at the front, it's dominated by this big distinctive grille. And it's finished in black here. You can also get it in chrome effect if you like. It gives it a really distinctive appearance on the road and you won't miss it in your rear view mirror. Sitting above is the, uh, the Genesis winged badge, which the company hopes will become a familiar sight in UK roads. And as we go around, we've got these twin bar design in the headlamps, both lit up with LED. And this is a Genesis design characteristic. It's part of their design ID, and you'll see it flow through into different aspects of the car. So go around, got big 90 inch wheels, which look pretty cool. They're finished in black here, which um, I also quite like. It works well, this severe red paint. So go rearwards, you'll see that there's a nice big chunky space here at the bottom of the wing. Now that's because Genesis does have a proper rear wheel drive platform and it means that you can have this more traditional cool looking aspect here. So you go backwards, you'll see more of this simple twin line infused design. And of course we've got the swooping curve around roof line that sets it apart from the saloon car. I quite like this kick in the bottom of the, uh, the rear the rear shoulder, which looks quite good, and it sits on, on these quite chunky arches at the rear. And as we go rearwards, you'll see that the lines blend into these twin bar tail lamps. And as we'll see in the moment, we've got something pretty cool going on with the rear spoiler here at the back. So obviously the bit that's really different is the rear end. Now this is not an estate car that's setting out to be the biggest load lugger in the world which means that we can have this curvy coupe-like rear end, which I think looks really neat. I love this spoiler, which you can see, you can get your hand in there and it lets the aero lines flow across the rear screen. I do particularly like this Genesis style high level rear brake light, which um, looks pretty neat. But yeah, here we go. You see the lights carry on the twin bar design aspect. We've got Genesis written across the rear here. And also, if you go around to the side, you'll notice in this beautiful light that we've got here, this lovely rear haunch where the light just kisses the surface there. I think it looks fantastic and it's a really, really sensitive piece of design. And it, yeah, if you get it in the right light, it will really set the design out and set the car out on the road. So we've got this lovely clean surface. How do you open the boot? Well, this is pretty neat. There's a little tiny button here at the bottom of the rear wiper. Electric tailgate pops open. And here we see the big difference over the saloon. It's simply practicality. You've got this nice wide open space that you can walk straight up to and load things in easily. The space is nice and wide and it's nice and long as well. That seems almost a shame to fold the rear seats. We've got this beautiful soft ribbed leather and these snazzy red seat belts. But there we go simply drop it down and it's all spring loaded so it's really easy to do which gives us almost flat load space obviously the uh, the big thing here is not necessarily about ultimate practicality it's about everyday user friendliness and this is so easy to do and so easy to engage with just flip the seats down and you're away so let's fold them back up i'll show you another neat trick i've spotted this button here to fold the seat rack rests up and slide the seat backwards and forwards. Now that's a feature that's for the G80 and it's meant to be for helping drivers create limo-like 
rear space in the back, but it's also quite handy just to fold that seat out of the way. If you do have something that's particularly awkward and bulky, and it means you don't have to mess about in the front with seat controls and the whatnot. Final thing, rear seat space. Getting in is a bit tricky, and this seat backrest is perhaps a bit bulky, but once you're there, you don't have loads of legroom or foot room, but the seat itself is quite nice. And yeah, it's a comfy enough place to be. It certainly doesn't feel cramped and I'd say it's pretty much good to go. So here we are in the driver's seat. And this is the first time that I've sat in it. First impressions, it's a lot sportier than the G80. I tested that a few weeks back. You can read the uh, review in the link below. This is a lot more driver focused. We've got a dashboard that is more angled towards the driver. The seating position is sporty. You've got a steering wheel that brilliantly comes really nice and close. You can get a really racy feel behind the wheel. In terms of the controls, they're all nice and simple. We've got proper buttons, thank goodness. We've got nice rotaries here. And in terms of the view out, you sit fairly low. You've got a good view over the bonnet. It does feel like a very, very sporty car, which is available in three model grades in the UK. We've got premium, luxury, and for the G70, there's a sport grade, and that would no doubt come up with all these cool features, such as the rib seats, the red stitching, and the silver features that we see inside here. Now, it's really apparent that this is a premium car and comes with premium level build quality and finish of materials. It's all very nice and soft to the touch. Everything is very precise and tactile. The steering wheel does feel very nice as well. Other features, you've got some nice silver finish controls here. That one selects a drive mode and we've got various other auxiliary buttons as well. Touchscreen naturally. This is a quite a wide screen and it's very high resolution and it's jam packed with Genesis connected features, which is good. Look forward to discovering those out on the road. Now all G70s are automatics with that eight speed auto. And that means that they're all gonna get paddle shifters behind the wheel, which you can use. It's quite a nice tactile action. Most will probably use the sport mode in the drive mode setting. And that's fair enough too. I know from driving the G80, it's fairly, fairly good profiling, the difference between the various settings is quite pronounced. So yeah, no doubt lots of people will prefer to stick it in sport mode and be on their way. The seats themselves are really good to sit in. They're quite, they're quite bolstered, they're quite firm, which is quite nice. And I do like, like all good sporty premium cars. You've got loads of adjustment by the uh, electric controls down the side here, including adjustable bolstering for your legs. And it's, it's a little thing, but it just shows again that Genesis knows what it takes to uh, take on its German alternatives and, yeah, feel just as good to drivers as those cars are.